If you're not using data to get a leg up on the competition, you'll want to after listening to Dr. Joel Evans, a distinguished professor of business at Hofstra University. It's the focus of today's In the Spotlight. All right, Dr. Evans, thanks for joining us today. My pleasure. Our conversation today is about database marketing. We hear about all types of marketing, but focusing on database marketing. First of all, what is it and what should we do with it? Database marketing is the ability to get much more information about people and products than we did in the past. And a large part of it is due to the computerization and software uh, that exists. So big data is one of the hottest topics among large companies and what it means is they're collecting more and more data from their consumers than ever before. Sometimes consumers know about it, sometimes they don't. For smaller firms, what they want to do is probably use a loyalty program or some vehicle whereby they collect a limited amount of information from customers, uh, enter it into a database, and uh, there are a whole bunch of inexpensive software projects that they could buy and then be able to track consumers' behavior and be able to better target uh, people who are good customers. Can you give us at least one example of one of these software programs that a lot of people have seemed to have uh, had success with? Yes, Intuit QuickBase. Intuit QuickBase is one that is very inexpensive and uh, will enable a company to develop a really excellent uh, database. Um, it doesn't require no work, but it requires a minimal amount of work. But it is, it's inexpensive. It's something that's specifically geared towards small companies. Microsoft also has a database uh, that they make available. It's relatively uh, inexpensive. The larger firms tend to have their own proprietary ones, or they work with Oracle or SAS or one of the larger companies. So, but there are things for small companies. Okay, so let's say I'm a small business owner, I'm not tech savvy, I really don't want to be fiddling with it too much. Um, how much effort? You said it requires a little bit of work. Do I have it, to put it in? It does require data entry. I mean, there's no way of getting around that. Even if you do what we recommended in the old days is that you let people throw in a business card or, or make an entry in a raffle every time they shop, you still had to do something with that. So I think the, the initial startup time would be some investment of a few hours, but once you have the people logged in and you track their behavior, that's what the software is for. But it's not time free. If you want to be involved in database management or database marketing, you have to invest some time in it. Now, do you have any examples of why a small business owner should invest those few hours and that um, period of learning about all this? Are there any studies that show that people who use database marketing do X percent better with sales? Oh, absolutely, because what it enables us to do is to track the customers in terms of A, how much they're spending. So we could reach out through email or telephone calls to people who are spending a lot. And uh, B, it enables us to track what they're buying so we know what's the most popular and depending upon what kind of store we are, let's say we're a small apparel store, it gives us a better sense of what, of what the best customers are interested in in terms of styles and colors uh, than we would have had before. Um, so that is very useful. Now I know personally, I kind of balk when, when retailers ask me to fill out all this information and I ask them, do I really have to? How does a small business owner get around that without making the customer feel that their privacy is being intruded upon? Well, again, two things. We have to limit what we ask. We don't need to know the date of birth and the income of the person. We're looking more about their purchase behavior and their likes and their dislikes, okay? And but people want to get in and out of a store. They may not want to go through all that, think about it. Right, so the second part of it is what's in it for me. So like with larger companies, if I have a loyalty program or I have something where the consumer gets rewarded that if they spend a certain amount, they get 20% off, they get a free something. Uh, there's gotta be a reward. There's gotta be something in it for the consumer. It can't be just something in it for the store. So consumers have been shown to be willing when there is a reward for them. How do you approach follow-up? Well, this is where it, you need to have the database where you have to spend some time 
where you are entering in the information about customer purchases. It has to be, you have to have some mechanism to do it. It could be that through your computerized uh, uh, checkout that you've got software in there that you could use to code the person, that each person has an individual identifying number so you really don't have to do anything. Final thoughts on being able to put this into practice. I think, unfortunately, that database marketing, whether you're a small firm or a large firm, is something that everybody's talking about, but they don't necessarily ha know how to execute. It's confusing, particularly for smaller firms. That's not what they're used to doing. They're not used to getting and tracking data. But there is an advantage to it, because it also helps them tailor their merchandise assortment better than they may be doing, and be able to turn over merchandise and not stock so much stuff that people aren't necessarily interested in. Any final takeaways? When using database marketing, even when it's done well, we have to recognize that it's not necessarily representative of everybody because everybody doesn't participate. So we have to be aware that there are going to be opportunities outside the database. So don't ignore those. Don't ignore those opportunities.